This is mewing. It's a postural technique that involves placing the tongue on the roof of the mouth to gain health and facial improvements. The aim is to align the teeth, accentuate your cheekbones, sharpen your jawline, and even straighten your nose naturally, all without invasive surgeries or expensive orthodontics. This may also diminish wrinkles and improve your airways, bringing the maxilla forwards, potentially extending your lifespan by enlarging your airways, reducing snoring and sleep apnea. It works because in your skull, you have these cracks called sutures that help the bone to enlarge evenly as children grow, one of them being on the roof of your mouth. If you apply consistent pressure on this using your tongue, it can make your face grow, just like using an expander device. This theory is called orthotropics. Ortho for straight, tropos meaning growth, which was inspired by my grandfather who was a practitioner using expander devices in the early 20th century. When he died, my father, Professor John Mew, the inventor of orthotropics, discovered his records, finding that it was indeed possible to grow the bone in people's faces without surgery. And now, building upon decades of knowledge and research that my father started and culminated in my family's dedication to holistic facial development, we have me, Dr. Mike Mew, the current expert of orthotropics and the inventor of mewing. Many of you today are here because you want to enhance facial aesthetics without having to fall into the pit of believing that expensive orthodontics, risky surgery and short-lived plastic surgical procedures are the only solutions. Beauty should not have to come at a high price or risk one's personal health to fit in with modern society's beauty standards. Instead of trying to fit everyone's face to a specific set of straight teeth or specific kind of fashionable nose, it's important to address why these features have gone crooked and what we can do to achieve your natural full genetic potential. The responsibility of any dentist or indeed any clinician involved with facial structures is to diagnose not just the visible abnormalities but also their root causes. My training as an orthodontist had instilled in me that environmental factors barely impacted facial growth, which was perceived predominantly as a genetic process. I undertook my orthodontic specialization training in Aarhus, Denmark, possibly the best university for growth and development in the world, despite the clear and overwhelming importance of the environment on facial growth and crooked teeth. Most of the treatments we were taught were based on a genetic cause. The belief that jaws sometimes grew correctly and other times not, largely depending on genetic influence. Today, I know that belief is incorrect. What is truly intriguing is that we face a deformity, the cause of which remains unknown to the vast majority of orthodontists. It's imperative to complement the root cause of any abnormality before attempting to correct it. The orthodontist's solution is straightforward. Align the teeth within the existing structure. This approach only provides a temporary remedy without addressing the underlying cause. The moment the orthodontic treatment is finished and the alignment is achieved, the teeth can relapse. Those who have undergone orthodontic treatment may relate to this. They're often handed retainers and told to wear them forever. If the teeth don't stay straight without a retainer, then what is actually achieved? Our ancestors had well-aligned teeth from birth to death without any assistance. Stop wearing retainers and the teeth may shift back to their original position. Wear them and you are preventing them from moving to where they want to go, which I really worry about. Orthodontists also believe that evolution has encouraged the absence of wisdom teeth. Human brain evolution resulted in a larger skull and smaller jaws with less space for all the teeth. Cooking methods also evolved, so that overall there was less biological need for third molars. And thus, to achieve aligned teeth, many of you would have experienced your wisdom teeth being removed. However, we also believe this to be not quite true. We believe that the real reason you get crowding and that your wisdom teeth don't fit is because the skull hasn't grown properly. If you do not develop to have all 32 teeth naturally aligned in broad dental arches, then something has gone seriously wrong with the way that your face has grown. Because the skull hasn't formed properly, teeth don't fit, and that is why we try and treat the whole face rather than just the teeth. 
Once we expand the face, the teeth will naturally fall into place. Extracting teeth is the equivalent of having a crooked set of fingers and amputating a finger to make more room on the hand. Notice how these attractive celebs all have broad, wide faces. This is what we're trying to achieve, and it is only possible through developing the whole face. Also, if you look at our face of our ancestors, you will notice how much larger their jaws were back then. I believe that part of the reason we have developed smaller jaws and cheekbones is because of our modern diets, which consist of easy and quick to chew soft food, while our ancestors had to eat hard foods that would have taken time to chew, and this has had a negative development in our population's faces. Also, the problem with teeth extraction is that it can cause the whole face to be set backwards, retracted. On the left, you can observe that her entire face, especially her lower jaw, is recessed. If the upper jaw is set back, this tends to lengthen the face, as is evident here. Moreover, her cheeks appear flat and recessed due to her upper jaw being positioned backwards. While her nose may seem disproportionately large, it is not the, actually the size that's the issue. The perceived prominence arises because her cheeks are recessed, making the nose appear more pronounced in contrast. Also, the bump you find on many people's noses is actually caused by the face growing downwards. This section of your nose is bone which is quite resistant to deformation. However, this section is cartilage and it will follow the maxilla back and down, leaving the bump where the two sections meet. Flat cheekbones also cause dark circles under the eyes and wrinkles to become more visible. Now, let me show what me and my father have been able to achieve with our patients in Pearly for the last 60 years. Apart from the aesthetic improvement, notice the forward upswing growth achieved with a proper facial development. Downswung faces are caused by both poor posture and weak muscles. The teeth in essence are blind. They rely on the tongue to act as a guide in order to form a neat alignment. For proper jaw development, the teeth need to be lightly touching each other in butterfly bite. If the tongue does not rest on the roof of the mouth and the teeth are not gently touching, it can result in malocclusion. The alignment of the teeth is majorly influenced by the tongue. The jaws don't grow optimally when left apart and if the positioning is highly erroneous, even the genes guiding growth become directionless. Merely keeping your mouth open can cause the jaws to descend while keeping it closed propels the jaw forward. If there's one thing you can take away from this video is that simply breathing from your nose and keeping your mouth shut can significantly affect the shape and alignment of teeth. Finally, let's compare the difference between twins in the result of orthotropics versus orthodontics. As you can see, the twin treated with orthodontics has a downward developed upper jaw, means he probably has less airway space, meaning he will probably be more prone to snoring and sleep apnea, which is likely to reduce life expectancy. In the Wisconsin Sleep Cohort Study, research was conducted in 1988 with an 18-year follow-up period for 1,522 participants. Among the participants, it was found that individuals diagnosed with sleep apnea in 1988 at the start of the trial had a three-fold increase of all causes of mortality compared to those without sleep disorder breathing, independent of age, sex, BMI, or other potential co-founders. Sleep apnea without treatment does not directly shorten life expectancy. However, it does increase the likelihood that patients will develop life-threatening health conditions that result in shortened life expectancy. By expanding faces, not only can we make people more attractive, but they may also have better sleep and healthier lives. This is why it's so important for yourself and the people you know to start mewing today. To summarize, problems with orthodontics. Braces and insecurities. They can make wearers feel self-conscious, especially adults. High costs. Orthodontic treatments, especially braces, can range from $3,000 to $10,000 or more, depending on the complexity and duration of treatment. Removing teeth. 
Traditionally, orthodontic sometimes involves extracting teeth, which can change the shape of the face and even affect breathing. Doesn't address the root causes. Orthodontic treatment often focuses on the alignment of teeth without addressing underlying causes like tongue posture or mouth breathing. Risk of relapse. Teeth can shift back if retainers aren't worn consistently post-treatment. Now, let's talk about other alternatives to mewing. Now, we argue that moving the maxilla forward is the key to a natural, good-looking face. Some of you might ask, why can't I expand the face with surgery? It's less effort, right? There are the hidden costs and pitfalls of surgery. While the allure of surgical enhancement is understandable, the realities are sobering. Problems with orthogonathic surgery. High costs. Orthogonathic surgery can be very expensive, often costing twenty dollars to $60,000, depending on the complexity of the surgery and the region. There's some celebrities who have even paid millions to get these procedures that frankly look unnatural. Potential health risks. As with any surgery, there are risks including infection, prolonged pain or complications. Loss of sensitivity. The surgery can result in a loss of sensation or numbness in parts of the face, often the lower lip. Risks of relapse. But the biggest fact that most people don't know is that 50% of many of these surgical changes can relapse within a decade. I believe that if people knew this, then many of them would reconsider going through all the pain, cost and time of these procedures. Finally, post-surgical recover can be lengthy, often requiring a liquid diet and causing swelling and discomfort. Problems with plastic surgery. The goal of plastic surgeons today is achieving this cat-eyed look with a small nose and a sharp chiseled jawline. However, there are a number of reasons why these look unnatural. If your nose has formed a bump because your face has downswung, what you should do is to try and guide the face upwards rather than just remove and straighten the bump. To get great cheekbones and a jawline, you need to bring the bone forward and up. It's going to look unnatural if you use filler to inflate the tissues, because you haven't actually made a jawline or given them cheekbones, you've just inflated the tissues. Here's, again, a full summary of the risk. Problems with plastic surgery. Unnatural appearance. Procedures can sometimes result in an appearance that doesn't look natural. For example, excessive fillers or facelifts. High costs. Common facial plastic surgeries like rhinoplasty can range from $5,000 to $15,000. Facelifts can be $7,500 to $15,000. Fillers and Botox can range from $500 to $2,000 per session. Temporary results. Procedures like Botox and fillers need to be redone periodically. Potential for addiction. The desire for continuous enhancement can lead to multiple procedures with scarring upon scarring effects of mental health, and most importantly, surgeries might exacerbate issues like body dysmorphia instead of resolving them. Not looking like a Cardassian is perfectly fine, and there's an incredibly wide range of male and female appreciation for variations in the masculine and feminine form. History shows us that beauty standards shift based on scarcity and prevailing circumstances. For example, when people didn't have a lot of food and being skinny was considered malnourishment, we had a lot of plump beauty standards, the Rubenesque period. In contrast, today a lot of people are overweight and have too much to eat, so you have these super skinny supermodels. The same goes for skin tans. Back in the day, the rich were pale and the poor were tanned because they would work in the fields. Because of this beauty standard, people used to apply lead powder to look artificially more attractive. Now, because the rich people are able to enjoy the sun and people who work stay in offices, you have people applying fake tans. Kim Kardashian thus seems attractive because scarcity brings value. She has an impossibly thin waist and an impossibly big barman bust. This is extremely expensive to have. Even if you don't like the way she looks, you have to say that she looks expensive because few people are able to get her procedures. However, amid these shifting sands of social standards, one constant remains, the appreciation of natural, healthy faces. Why chase a fashion trend when you can have this timeless beauty that improves your health? 
Also, consider the elegance and grace of Princess Diana, despite not fitting the narrow standards set by today's influencers, with the cat eyes, a symmetrical face and lips, and a chiseled jawline, her beauty amplified her character and remains undeniable. Beauty has many forms, and it's more than just skin deep. Instead of being ensnared by fleeting social standards, we should strive to have the best versions of ourselves, celebrating both our unique features and inherent worth. Now, we have talked about avoiding the pressures of society's norms and expensive solution. Now let's talk about enhancing one's facial structure and self-esteem organically. How to embrace a lasting solution and a holistic approach to beauty and well-being. And how to do it for free, without resorting to expensive, unnatural or potentially harmful methods. The key to mewing is to do it consistently. If you need to have a complete change in not only your tongue posture, but also how you use the muscles in your face and the posture you have for sitting and standing. This is what we're trying to achieve, a straight neck with the chin tucked in and the tongue on the roof of the mouth with the back third activated. Lips together, teeth together and tongue on the roof of the mouth. Not only will you look more attractive, but by adapting a better posture, you'll look more confident. People will notice the presence you have in the room. If you want to look like a princess or a prince, you need to act like one. Here are my steps to how to mew properly. Breathing and lips. Breathe through your nose all day, awake and during sleep. Consider nose breathing even during exercise. If you breathe through your mouth, these muscles, which pull on the midsection of the face, are going to pull down and your jaw may recede because the teeth won't be in contact for proper alignment. Avoid breathing with your chest too. Adopt belly or diaphragmatic breathing. Body posture. Fix all body posture problems. Anterior pelvic tilt, forward hip tilt, hunchback forward head and rounded shoulders. People who breathe through their mouths usually have an underdeveloped upper jaw and receding bottom jaw. Because of this, they bend their neck forward to allow for more air to enter their throat. It's crucial that you force the neck straight, otherwise it could cause the face to lengthen. Swallowing. This is what a bad swallow looks like. A proper swallow should show no indication within the face, like this. If you want to achieve hollow cheeks, it's important to relax the jaw, cheeks and chin muscles as much as possible and use the tongue to swallow. If you don't do this, the cheek muscles and jaw muscle will overdevelop. Mewing. Now, with mewing, I recommend it should be done constantly and you adopt this as your new facial posture whenever you end a conversation with someone, that tongue needs to slam on the top of the palate. For people finding it difficult, I recommend doing it for a minimum of eight hours a day. There are five steps to mewing properly. The end spot will allow you to find where to properly place the tip of your tongue. The cheesy swallow will help find the back third of the tongue. This is key to mewing, as it is key for locking the tongue in place and utilising the subconscious so that you remember to do it even when you're not thinking about it. The Mona Lisa swallow will help you to mew properly without engaging the muscles in your face. The suction hole is key to being able to mew all day, as it will allow for your tongue naturally stay glued to the roof of the mouth by creating a vacuum within it with the minimum of effort. Finally, the Mackenzie Chin Tuck ties proper oral and body posture together. First point, find the end spot. Say the letter N or Ting or N. Mm. It's just behind the upper front teeth. That's where the tip should be. Then do the cheesy swallow. Make a swallow while you're doing a really cheesy smile and raising your eyebrows as high as you possibly can. When you do this type of swallow, you may need a glass of water to help you, and your eyebrows are maximally raised and your cheesiness is maximally cheesy, you should notice something strange going on in the back of your throat. That's the back third of your tongue rising up. 
try and really identify this. So then you can try the Mona Lisa swallow. This is where you swallow, same as a cheesy swallow, except no facial expression. There should be no movement above my hand, like the Mona Lisa. Except now you're using the back third of the tongue. Here you've identified the back third of the tongue and you're using it without any facial musculature. So finally, you're going to get the suction hold. To get a suction hold, you swallow multiple times until there's no saliva in your mouth, so that there's a vacuum within your mouth. At some point, you won't be able to swallow because there's no saliva, so there's a trick. At this point, draw the tongue back as if you're pulling a piston back within your mouth. All the saliva from around the teeth will be drawn down. It will collect at the floor of the mouth, then your tongue, which will have left the end spot, now comes back, does a sweep underneath the saliva, goes back to the end spot, spot and you do another swallow. Repeat and repeat and repeat till you have no more saliva left. The saliva starts running thick and your tongue becomes molded to the mouth. Now the vacuum can maintain this position. Finally, what you're going to do is you do a Mackenzie chin tuck, look this up, having gained a Mackenzie chin tuck, you can feel the back third of your tongue, now hold it with the back third of your tongue. So you're holding the Mackenzie chin tuck with the back third of the tongue, you've got your tongue max vaxed, that will all then hold itself. Now you can do this on autopilot, you don't need to remember, you, all you need to do is hold the lips together, hold the suction in place, you're done. One really good sign that you are with a Max Vax is the skin underneath your chin should be sucked up like this. That's a great sign that you've got a vacuum in your mouth. Otherwise, how do you really know these things? Chewing will help improve your jawline more. However, if you do it poorly, you'll build the cheek muscles and look bloated. Also, you must have your jaw joints checked before starting any hard or prolonged chewing. So make sure you chew with your mouth closed. As I addressed earlier, our modern diets make it so that we eat a lot of soft, refined foods that we can consume very quickly, causing our faces to develop malocclusions. You could change your diet to chew more, but that's why, if your jaw giants are completely healthy, I recommend you chew chewing gum for two to three hours daily. The harder the gum, the better. Also, if your jaw begins to feel sore after a few days of chewing, take a break and regularly check your jaw joints. How can I get the best results? Mewing app. Now, how can you harness the remarkable facial changes that mewing promises? just like those jaw-dropping transformations I showcase in the video. The first option is to take the information I've provided today and attempt to navigate the mewing journey on your own. It's certainly a viable route, and if you believe that's the best approach for you, I fully support your decision. However, bear in mind that this could lead to lost time, potentially spanning months or even years, as you wade through the complexity of mewing without guidance. In the long run, this could prove costlier especially considering the enhanced benefits and progress you might miss out on, not starting with a solid foundation. The chances of discontinuing or becoming demotivated increase when you face obstacles without the necessary resources or support. This was my key motivation behind developing the Mewing app, a comprehensive platform where we guide you step by step, ensuring you grasp and employ every vital aspect of mewing, attempting to accelerate your journey from a beginner to an expert. Let's dive deeper into what the Mewing app offers. The Mewing app, a comprehensive guide to mewing. Delve into the science behind mewing and uncover the reasons for its escalating popularity. The foundations, setting up the correct posture from day one, choosing the right approach based on your facial structure and tracking your daily progress. Mindset mastery, understanding the psychology of consistent mewing and especially develop strategies to stay resilient against symptoms of body dysmorphia. Sustained commitment is key for lasting results. Techniques and variations. Every face is unique. Here you'll learn different mewing techniques and find the one most suited to your needs. 
Progress tracking. With integrated tools, monitor your daily, weekly, and monthly progress to keep yourself motivated. Alerts. Timely reminders to reinforce good posture off habits and ensure you're well hydrated. Personalized plans. Mewing strategies tailor made based on thorough individual assessment. Remember, the Mewing app isn't just another app in the store, it's a holistic system. Whether you're a newbie or a seasoned mewer, our platform ensures you have every resource at your fingertips. Like Sarah, one of our ardent users eloquently puts it, Mewing transformed my life. Not only do I look better, but I also feel more confident and healthier. So, are you set to commence this transformative journey and harness the multifaceted advantages of mewing in an effective and safe manner? Dive deep into the mewing universe and experience the metamorphosis firsthand. Mewing Masterclass Program, what you'll get. 50 plus expert videos. Dive into the collection of over 50 meticulously crafted videos, each tailored for different stages of mewing. With this vast reservoir of content, it's akin to receiving personalized advice from me right in the comfort of your own home. Each video has been designed to ensure every user is equipped with the insights they need, offering a pathway that feels as direct and personalized as an in-personal consultation. Guidance and best practices. Benefit from the distilled wisdom of years of experience. These video sessions are not just about techniques, it's also about best practices, ensuring that you get the maximum benefit from each mewing session. Avoid common mewing pitfalls. With so much misinformation out there, our program ensures you follow correct techniques backed by science. Get real results. Witness tangible progress in jaw definition, facial symmetry, and overall appearance. Take the next step. If you're ready to transform your facial aesthetics and harness the benefits of mewing, click below and join the, the mewing program. With increased global recognition of mewing, don't miss out on this chance to enhance your facial aesthetics the natural way. Join us and embark on the mewing journey. I'd love to see you guys inside the mewing app. I'll speak to you soon.